Hey guys, welcome back to History Facts. Today we are talking about Homo sapiens connections with Neanderthals. Enjoy the video. Before the early 2010s, scientists were conflicted on the question of Homo sapiens interbreeding with Neanderthals, but since then, multiple studies have shown the incredible overlap between Neanderthal and human DNA, enough that approximately 1% to 4% of modern human DNA traces directly back to Neanderthal ancestry. Neanderthals coexisted with modern humans for tens of thousands of years, and the two groups certainly met. Evidence shows that Homo sapiens not only procreated with Neanderthals, they also slew and ate them. It's not surprising that prehistoric humans mated with Neanderthals since prehistoric people were notoriously promiscuous. But while science proves humans mated with Neanderthals, the evidence still leaves some questions open. When did they begin to interbreed? Was it consensual? And were there human-Neanderthal relationships? Most modern people have a small percentage of Neanderthal DNA. There's not a huge difference between prehistoric Homo sapiens and Neanderthals, it turns out. While Neanderthals were slightly stockier and had thicker bones, the two were compatible in many ways. According to a study published in Science, on average, up to 4% of a person's genetics trace directly to the Neanderthals. While the Neanderthals vanished 30,000 years ago, the study provides solid genetic evidence that prehistoric Homo sapiens procreated with Neanderthals. Homo sapiens may have begun mating with Neanderthals after migrating from Africa. Homo sapiens migrated from Africa in large numbers around 65,000 years ago. When they spread to the Middle East and Europe, Homo sapiens encountered Neanderthals. When the two hominids met, they also mated. Recent scientific evidence shows Homo sapiens and Neanderthals interbred multiple times, including early mixings that may have occurred over 100,000 years ago after small groups of Homo sapiens left Africa. Interbreeding with likely Neanderthals shaped the DNA of subsequent generations. DNA overlap occurred before scientists originally estimated Homo sapiens met Neanderthals. Scientists recently solved a prehistoric DNA mystery. How did a Neanderthal living in southwest Germany 100,000 years ago have modern human mitochondrial DNA, or mtDNA? As recently as 2010, Scholars believe that interbreeding between Homo sapiens and Neanderthals likely only stretched back 60,000 years ago, when Homo sapiens left African to slowly spread to the Middle East and Europe. But research in 2017 shows that a female human in Africa mated with a Neanderthal male over 220,000 years ago. This coupling spread DNA to an entire lineage of Neanderthals, who may have met Homo sapiens in Europe tens of thousands of years later. Homo sapiens may have forcefully procreated with Neanderthals. Was mating between humans and Neanderthals consensual? Scientific data provides scant evidence on that question. However, one clue would come from examining exactly who was doing the procreating. Was it Neanderthal males impregnating human females or vice versa? Genetics researcher Adam Siepel says, All we really know is that some offspring of humans and Neanderthals eventually got incorporated into human populations, 
because what we see is small fragments of genomes in human populations. Author Robert Sawyer takes a slightly darker view on consent. I wish I could paint a more romantic tale of candlelit dinners over mammoth steak, but it seems much more likely that the gene flow was mostly unintentional. Or, in short, the groups didn't mate intending to cause pregnancy. Only one group of humans doesn't have Neanderthal DNA. Homo sapiens migrated around the world, sometimes mingling with other hominid species. But just one group of modern humans shows no evidence of interbreeding with Neanderthals. Modern ethnic groups from around the world carry Neanderthal DNA from interbreeding, except for people with solely African ancestry. Sub-Saharan Africans never interacted with Neanderthals and thus didn't have a chance to mingle their DNA. Everyone else carries around 1 to 4% Neanderthal genes. Humans share 99.7% of their DNA with Neanderthals. Homo sapiens and Neanderthals most likely mated and fought each other, but the two groups might have been nearly indistinguishable when they coexisted in Europe and the Middle East. That's because Neanderthal DNA is almost identical to human DNA. Humans and Neanderthals shared 99.7% of their DNA. That makes Neanderthals much closer genetic relatives than chimps, who share 98.8% of their DNA with humans. In addition to the close genetic relationship, Homo sapiens and Neanderthals crossbred introducing additional Neanderthal DNA into the human genetic pool. Neanderthals may have gone extinct due to hybridization. Interbreeding with Homo sapiens might have been a bad idea for Neanderthals. The Neanderthal Y chromosome was not completely compatible with the human Y chromosome. As a result, if a Neanderthal male procreated with a human female, the pregnancy would have frequently ended in a miscarriage. Population geneticist Fernando Mendez identified the mutations on the Neanderthal Y chromosome that would trigger an immune response from a human woman. If she became pregnant, the woman's immune system could have caused a miscarriage. In fact, the Neanderthals may have gone extinct after intermixing with Homo sapiens and essentially becoming absorbed into their group. Homo sapiens slew and ate Neanderthals. Homo sapiens and Neanderthals might have fought each other for 100,000 years as Homo sapiens tried to expand from Africa into Neanderthal territory in Europe and Asia. In November 2020, evolutionary biologist and paleontologist Nicholas R. Longrich said that although it's tempting to think the two groups might have got along, biology and paleontology paint a darker picture. Far from peaceful, Neanderthals were likely skilled fighters and dangerous warriors. Archaeological evidence indicates that Neanderthals used spears to hunt big game, so they likely also used such tools to protect themselves, and both Neanderthal and Homo sapien prehistoric remains show signs of skull and upper body trauma. Shanadar III, for example, a 40-year-old Neanderthal who lived in Iraq around 50,000 years ago, was slain after a spear pierced him through the rib cage. Anthropologist Stephen Churchill demonstrated that the tool that took Shanidar III's life could have been a lightweight projectile spear. A Neanderthal jawbone discovered from a cave in southwestern France showed signs of cut marks from a stone tool, indicating the Neanderthal child was slain and eaten. 
Longrich said Neanderthals likely survived for 100,000 years despite the conquest, because they were far more familiar with the terrain and had muscular bodies and large eyes that aided in close combat and dark lighting conditions. It's not clear why Homo sapiens eventually prevailed, perhaps they developed better weaponry or hunting techniques. Thanks for watching. Do like, subscribe and comment.